Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for spending your valuable time with the ADAPT 2030 channel. Let's do a farm update, spring 2023. Got started on the barn last month and it just kept moving forward, stripped it around with the OSB and we're finally at putting shelves inside, getting the doors on. Also had a chance to test out the yurt and get camping up at about 1500 feet to run through a bit of gear because the post-apocalyptic Fiction section is now current affairs. Let's go through some prices of chicken, duck, and turkeys live, as well as this little cutie here from the Amish farm. Because we look at the personal income tax rate multiplied now with the inflation rate, you're going to have to grow your own food to survive through this. And when I say this, this is an OBS assessment here because the post-apocalyptic fiction section moved to current affairs every time you turn, look, move. There's something else that seems to be bending reality into, oh, nail-biting time every minute of every day. So that's why I needed to turn off the distractions for a little bit, get out camping, you know, get the hands in the soil again as we come into planting season right now. Finally, it seems like the cold finally ended. But it was a long time to wait here in East Tennessee for it to finally finish uh, their update with the hay. It seems that there's been, you know, with the really cold freeze that hit a few months back, the hay is about 50% of normal currently. So I was warned and told, you know, stock up on some hay if you can get it right now on the first cut. Okay. Rainfall, it's been off and on. Uh, but these temperatures finally have lifted enough to be able to really put things in the ground where I'm confident enough now to put our tomatoes. And we had things growing in the garage under lights. We had things in the kitchen that we set up racks for uh, getting like, for example, a hibiscus, the tobacco, uh, what else, the, the can of lilies, and a few other of the edibles on the uh, herbs and spices side to, you know, come up with peppers, for example. We got four different types of hot peppers this year. Finally to get it out in the ground and now it's, you know, trying to grow along the fence line. It is time. So this is so integral this year that you can grow some of your own food. Now, just for a quick update of what I've been doing out here, I needed more storage space because I want to, you know, really have a workshop where I can, you know, work and plant on things, repair things and take it out of the garage to set up two indoor grow units that I'm going to be running side by side here. Ted Marchildon with the Omega Grow system as well as Eden Grow systems on a double deck tower. I'm going to be having those in my hands here in the next couple of days, run them side by side. But let's take a look at the barn and really if I can do it, you can do it also. So I had one of my neighbors uh, come over and help me who is more familiar with building, you know, to put up something like this. It was 32 feet long, 16 feet in depth. And, you know, digging all the, the holes to get the poles in and then get them all centered and then, you know, get everything squared up before we did anything else. Then we started to wrap it a little bit, moving the wood piles at the same time. And then it was just, you know, slow going on, measuring, remeasuring everything. We're using two by sixes to wrap that up get it ready, put in the door frames, and then uh, rained a bunch when we were working. So the OSB tried to keep that as dry until we put it flush onto the sides there. Sell in May and go away. Wall Street's wisest advice this time. It is different. It's worse. The Wall Street Journal warned, don't just sit there, do something. Morgan Stanley warns commercial real estate is headed for a crisis worse than 2008. It's no longer a black swan, it's a flock of black swans. There's a banking crisis, commercial real estate, de-dollarization, rate hikes, and persistent inflation. BRICS is the hottest ticket in town with an additional 19 countries looking to join and move away from the dollar. It's no wonder Google search hitting record high April 2023, quote, how to buy gold. Mention the ADAPT 2030 channel, you're going to get some first class service. Patriot Gold Group offers the no fee for life IRA where your IRA or 401k can be in physical gold or silver on qualifying rollovers. 888-546-7020. Call to get your free investor guide today. 
Keep in mind, Patriot Gold Group is Consumer Affairs top rated IRA gold dealer for six years in a row. That's 888-546-7020. Give them a call. And now on with the video. Again, I just wanted to go with a single slope, single side roof thing. That's all we really needed was a storage shed with the lights inside to also have part of a workshop for repair, etc. Putting on the front a bit, and we had that little storage section snuck up in there between the roof. It's about two and a half feet tall. It's great for anything long that you don't want to stack up against the wall. And we're using simple OSB, and we're on a little bit of a pitch, so we started to wrap the bottom in some tin roofing. And then under that, there's actually gravel to allow more of that rainfall to seep into the ground versus coming into any side of this little barn here. Put the door in, got a flush. You know, it was my first time to really set a door like that from a zero from the ground up. You know, repairing a door or replacing a door is quite different than actually measuring for it as you're building to put it in place with the shims and everything. You know, could I build the thing again by myself? Uh, it would. There'd probably be a few more mistakes than if I did it a third time or a fourth time. But remember, this is like OJT. So having the basic skills on even how to put this up right here, because somebody else told me, why don't you turn that into living quarters? And I was like, well, because it's going to be full of tools and fertilizer and seed and farm equipment and this sort of thing and extra lumber that we're not using. Don't think anybody would want to live in there, but then, you know, brought me right back to Thailand to see a bunch of these, you know, little guest houses, etc. Once you build the first one, it's sort of like a copy paste, rinse and repeat type of thing, but you need to get some skills training, at least try to build something. You know, building a bookshelf in your house is great, but to scale it up to be able to build something like this, you know, where to sink the holes, how to square it up, put your batter boards, all these types of things, all new for me too. You know, I'm just telling you what I experienced when we were building this thing and the amount of knowledge that I learned, especially mistakes and things that we forgot to buy that we thought we had enough of. Anytime you buy anything on a construction project like this, go 10% over. Because even if you don't use it that second, you can always use it for another something else around your property. And after the OSB was up and we we're starting to side up, then we started to screw everything really tight into those two by sixes from the outside inward. And working with two people is going to make it way easier, especially if you're going to connect the rafter boards like we did together with an overlap on them. And two people, much safer as well. You know, you're handling heavy things, things dropping. It's a really long distance. You might not think 32 feet is very long, but it's long when you're trying to put up four by fours across that center beam there. Things are heavy, they're awkward, you're trying to work around, so you always wanna have a second person with you. Better to work on sunny days, because again, right here, everything got wet, and luckily the OSB didn't really get to that point where it expanded at all before we got some uh, paint on top of it. Then we got the roof on, and you know, there's different types of uh, tar paper, and it's not even really called tar paper anymore, it's just sort of you know water shielding, really light compared to the old stuff. And even when it wasn't complete, I still started to use it to uh, put the zero point in there. Those are the kind of things I'm talking about, just farm equipment. And finally got the roof on, and now it's about wrapping it all up. Again, you know, getting that paint on there quickly, so uh, there's not really much water damage. And then we ended up getting the, uh, the roller doors on there. Those are eight feet long, and they slide into the center. And then the one on the right also slides into the center. And you can see where we started to wrap right above the the door there going around and I still need to get the gutters on this thing and in the back the water catchment tanks and also the shelving on the inside. Still have a few tasks to do but it'll get done over the next month here. A bit warmer, days are a bit longer, we can do you know more than it was even a month ago. Because if we're looking at inflation rates also you know you gotta add in personal income tax on top of the inflation rate that's draining everybody's money so I don't know which country you're in, but thank you for spending your valuable time here, wherever we are around the planet, sharing information, ideas, and solutions. You know, but Finland, wow, a 60% almost of personal income tax. You got to think about the sales taxes, property taxes, and every other types of tax that are out there as well. So at the end of it, when you really look, you just have probably, what, 10 or 20% of your money that you actually worked for. Everything else is being eaten up. Now we're looking at massive inflation rises. 
So let's look at some chicken prices here. I actually got this from Rural King here. This is for East Tennessee if you're interested to try to compare price. So we ended up buying some new turkeys, and that's down at the bottom there, standard turkeys, $9.99 a piece. We got four of those. The eggs are great. We're also trying to breed those to be able to raise some turkeys and then sell them. But the straight run chickens up to like five fifty. Before they were two fifty, just even a year ago. These prices have gone up so much. I was shocked when we went in. Bantams, excellent choice. Little tiny uh, birds are a little bit larger than a pigeon, but they give an egg that's probably takes two and a half of those eggs to equal one chicken egg. They eat almost nothing. They're very quiet, and you know there's very little poo from them coming out to, to leave any types of smells. Very compact, very quiet. You could raise those, and nobody would know in your neighborhood. Freight run ducks. Friend of mine just got a bunch of runner ducks. They were a little more. They were ten bucks each. And then the guinea. That's guinea fowl, and seven twenty nine. But you know what? Even since I had this, we bought a few guineas also, and they are seven ninety nine now. So that price went up even a little bit. So everybody look, prices are rising by the minute. And uh, speaking of the Amish, you know, they have these labs for sale, $100. They're well raised, well taken care of. And uh, they put them out on the weekends for people who are looking to have uh, pets for sale. Because we bought these lambs and the mother as a set. The thing is, he sold them to us as live weight at full maturity for the you there and then the two lambs. It was a bit on the pricey side, but we're going to be able to breed these out with one of our neighbors and then have actually meat sheep that we can trade for something else. Because as I see it here, you know, this is the world we're moving towards so quickly. And if you're not out trying to prepare and, and get some of your own access to resources, it's going to be more difficult moving through this. And when I said lambs, I am talking about this. This is from the Amish handwritten here. Uh, we can take a look at the pricing. It's slightly different than it was even the last update that I'd done. You can see where they even scratched out. Look where they scratched out the prices and put new prices in because it's getting expensive for them too. The feed is just ridiculous. You know, these lambs, and uh, they eat a lot. Sheep eat a lot. And uh, there's fertilizer right now. At the farm co-op, I wanted to get a couple bags of uh, like triple 19 or triple 10. They didn't have the mixes, so I ended up last year even doing the same, buying like 4500 or 0460, and then just you know doing my own ratios on that and scooping them together like one pound, one pound, one pound, and mixing it up in a can, shaking it, rolling it around, trying to get it to interdisperse like they do in the mix bags. Having luck with that, and we're trying to mix the, uh, the chicken droppings from the chickens we have. And we've dug holes further out in the field where we're throwing some of the straw that uh, the lambs are using and then interlaying it with the straw, the detritus, or the whatever leftover uh, foods, droppings, etc., from the lambs, in addition to layering it with what's coming off the chickens and then you know layer that with another straw. And then once the hole gets full, then covering it up. And then we'll dig it out next year after it's had a chance to break down. That's massively good fertilizer. Because the old chicken house that was on sort of, you know, in the back of the property there, they were, it had been breaking down for, what, years and years and years. So just scrape that stuff off because it's already hard. You know, use a shovel to scrape it off the wood. And that was already perfect. It was just a hardened fertilizer right there. So anyway, trying to take a, a waste product to turn it into something valuable. You know, people... Originally, a couple years ago, when I started recycling stuff, like, oh, I'll take the broken down tool. Let me see if I can repair it. Can I make a new handle for it? And I'd be like, dude, what are you doing? Why don't you just buy a new one? And I was like, well, maybe there's not going to be opportunity to buy new ones, and maybe we'll have to repair a lot of older stuff. Now, it makes sense to them. Like, hey, you know what? There's not so many tools available in the stores right now. I was like, yeah, go to an estate sale. Find something there. So anyway, let's go through for sale lambs and calves. So lambs, right now, 70 to 150 pounds, 275 a pound live weight. And then there'll be a charge if they're going to uh, get that ready to take to the butcher for you. And the calves, remember we got beef and dairy, two different types there. Uh, they're running about $1.80 for beef. And uh, the, 
they have some breeds and you know they don't have a hundred percent angus but they have you know they raise their own cattle so they're always experimenting with different breeds like i don't know Amish, they have some breeds that just aren't commercially available because they've been crossbreeding these different varieties of cows themselves and cattle and then we got the dairy type straight run cat straight run dairy you know everybody knows the black and white ones milk that sort of the buck 60 a pound by the way, most of your dairy cows end up as McDonald's hamburgers or hamburger that you might buy in the supermarket that's mainly dairy after, you know, they've run their course and uh, produced the most milk. Buck sixty a pound. Now remember, if you're not going to butcher that out yourself, you're going to have to send it off to a butcher and then you need to add an extra how many cents per pound for preparation for that. And we always try to have them save the bones. You know, we've we butchered everything ourselves on the last cow. This time, not going to do it again. Too much work. But the uh, lambs, we can get through a whole, you know, 120 pound, uh, you know, sheep, something like that, in an afternoon. That's not very difficult to do. But if you're rocking in with 700 pounds of meat, eh, it's going to take a little longer. And you definitely want to do it in the winter, when you could just leave it out. Like, for example, on the garage floor or something where the garage floor gets icy cold because we don't have a climate controlled garage. It gets cold in there. So it's taking on the temperatures, the outside, and sometimes, you know, it'll be in the 30s here. And, you know, that garage is icy cold on the slab. So to leave it out there, nice. So anyway, that's, that's the update on the prices here. So that's gone up. So, you know, because when I gave you the update last time, uh, the beef was even at 600 to 1200 pounds it was a dollar 50 now it's a dollar 80 and that dairy had gone up the dairy uh, up to a buck 60 I can't read through the price that they scratched out anyway you can see it keeps going up and up even for those who are raising the animals so you can just imagine what it's going to be like With a lot of processing facilities and and things closing down burned down whatever they're shuttered because of you know accidents or whatever happened at their processing facilities. I think there's 1,300 that have had problems or burned in the last year and a half or so in the United States. And again, part of decompressing for a minute was going up right at the edge of the Cherokee National Forest. That is uh, Chilhawi right there that you're looking at the dam. It takes us a good hour and 45 minutes to drive over there. But once you get up on top of the mountain, it's a slow cruise. And I thought it was going to be old forest like this. You know, I go, old oh, forest, this thing's ancient up there, ancient energy. And it truly is like super ancient energy feeling up there. You know, something resonating from the earth when you get on the plateau on the top there. So I wanted to run through a little bit of my bug out gear. I have a yurt because we're going to throw that in the back of the truck. Six people can sleep inside this thing comfortably. And if you're going to run with a few people, then uh, you want to have accommodation that you can bring and set up anywhere. So since we were backpacking it in, we brought it on the truck and were able to set it up. And also these fire pits up in the National Park, you see those little holes there? We brought just like a little tiny ventilation fan that you might use for like an RV or something and put it right next to the hole. Look at the fire. Mostly those times are, they're smoldering because they just don't get enough airflow in there. And then look at the coals to be able to cook some food on. So this is the update for the last couple months while I try to keep centered and make sense in the madness around me. But please remember, it is going to be so integral this year to get your food up and running. Anything you can supplement from anywhere you buy food is going to be greatly needed. Trueleafmarket.com. That link's in the description box below. Great way to support the channel. And also, Ransom Godwin and myself, Thursday nights. Revolution Radio and all the live platforms that we stream on right here for you to choose from. Go to libertylinks.io forward slash solar minimum. I do thank you for watching. Hope you got something out of the video and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.